Our scripture reading today comes from John chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. And John begins, The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. The word of the Lord. This is a uh, strange thing in our culture that we continue to say Merry Christmas. Uh, Our culture has already moved on to the next thing. We've already had New Year's. Your retail stores are already selling Valentine's Day, I'm sure. Uh, If if you've made it out, I think the store shelves have already been switched out. Uh, But maybe you have given gifts, or maybe you can remember giving gifts uh, to kids, or or these circumstances where you hoped that your gift that you gave someone lasts a little bit longer uh, than just a few days or a few hours. Uh, That maybe you've had those moments where you're like, I want to get someone this gift that that they're going to remember, that they're going to look back on this Christmas and this time, and they're going to think fondly of, you know, think about giving kids bikes and uh, instruments and all sorts of fun things, and you hope that it lasts, and and maybe it's a week or two later, and and you noticed your kids no longer play with this toy, and you're like, well, was was that worth it or not? And uh, and then there are those gifts that you wish had a shelf life of just a day, and you're like, why are they still playing with this thing? And and it, maybe it's the obnoxious noises or whatever it is about the toy, that at some point as your kid has played with this thing over and over and you're like, wait a minute, kids didn't make this toy. There's an adult somewhere <laughs> who developed this toy to be this irritating for so long and, and you wish that Christmas would just be over and the toys would be over. Um, but the consumer Christmas, the season of Christmas is everything leading up to Christmas. It's about buying And then the day of Christmas happens, and Consumer Christmas wants that to not last because you need to buy the next gift. So we need a reason to turn around to buy some more things that we don't want this feeling to linger. But the season of Christmas for the church is a uh, 12-day season. Uh, It's why when you you sing the 12 days of Christmas, it's day one, Christmas happens, day two after, kind of on the 26th, now it's the second day of Christmas, and so on and so forth. Uh, But it's 12 days leading up to Epiphany, which celebrates Christ's kind of public announcement to the world and his kind of public ministry. Uh, But this season is about celebrating life in the midst of death and and light in the midst of darkness. And it's not just a, oh, we hit the switch and it's over, Um, but there's a process to it. It's it's something that takes time, that takes commitment, that takes uh, a life change that goes with you, not just a singular moment. Uh, Because even the original Christmas, Jesus' actual birth, uh, was not just an instantaneous thing. It was a process. It was a a nine months of carrying a baby and years of raising a child. And and the church tradition is about 30 years or so that Jesus then uh, takes on that public ministry. Uh, But life was emerging in a process. Can you imagine if the angel Gabriel had shown up to Mary one day and said, you're going to have a baby and it's today. But it's not, it was, it's a longer process. And so uh, Christmas is a process, and the acceptance and the response to the life that God offers is a process, and, and that's sometimes simplified in church ways into uh, did you make just a yes or no decision at one point in your life? Uh, and if you made that yes or no decision, then you can just feel good about things for the rest of life. Uh, but. But the season of Christmas that light is emerging and life is emerging is a spiritual journey invitation into a life that is following after Jesus is and a life that gives uh, birth to new life and creates even more light in, in the world. And so the response to God's life that he offers is often surprising. Uh, we tell the Christmas story in that warm and cozy way in which we assume everybody always responds positively Uh, But not everybody responded positively in Jesus' life, and not everybody is going to respond positively to it in our current world. And so I think there's something of value to reading John 1 
uh, and it's a part of the lectionary readings of the Christmas season of, of reading a text that talks about God's light showing up into the dark world, and yet not everybody accepts it. Uh, we have to deal with the fact that the world often rejects the light. And here's what John 1, 9 and 10 said again. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own did not accept him. That's a part of the Christmas story that we don't often highlight for ourselves or emphasize of, okay, here's God moving into new life, and yet the world often rejects it. And not just the world, but we often reject it. Uh, because yes, we might ultimately, as if you've been a faithful follower of Christ for many years, you have said yes many times to living that life out, uh, but we also fall short at times. We also still stumble and fall, and we still follow after our own kind of selfish interests. Um, but we often do say no to God's gift of life. And we know that we live in a troubled world where life is precious and challenged, and in the midst of a pandemic, we know how difficult it is to live in the midst of the struggles of everyday life. And um, you might hope that light is coming into the world through just a vaccine and that, oh, well, we're just so close to having fullness of life and it'll be back to normal. And then more news stories hit you that, well, it's probably going to be a lot more challenging than that. And uh, you might have heard news stories of medical staff intentionally leaving vaccines out to destroy them and being obviously fired and then being charged with, with crimes. Uh, that might not be how you would have imagined people would respond to the opportunity of vaccines and potential ways of surviving in a pandemic. Uh, the LA Times reported that 20 to 40 percent of LA's frontline workers declined the vaccine in Riverside County, California, about 50% of healthcare workers refused it, causing officials to have to strategize how to best distribute the unused doses. They weren't counting on some of those frontline workers to reject it because you've got a shelf life, you've got to figure out who's going to get the vaccine. And, and so there are moments where life seems like it might be possible and, and you might have some hope that we're right there and then we realize, you know, the world doesn't always go as simply and as easily as we expect it to. And it's not just life or death, but people are destructive in their lives. Even when they know it's going to be destructive, they can't sometimes help themselves that we just cause more harm than we intend. And so people leave their families to pursue after the lusts or desires of their hearts elsewhere. People lash out in violence, even to those who care for them most. People financially thrive sometimes off of just the needs of others. And think about the, some of the businesses early on that you heard in the news where uh, the pandemic and, and certain supplies were needed and people kind of price gouged and had to get publicly called out by people in the state of, hey, stop it. Uh, it is not right to get rich off of the needs and the challenges of those around you. And we often, not in these extreme ways all the time, but we often say no to God's life. Uh, we reject life by destructively gossiping and harming others' reputations. We reject life when we choose kind of to be selfish and at the cost of others. We reject life when we choose to do nothing to stop the injustices against our neighbors. And it's a reminder that we are all in this boat of struggling to accept the light that comes into the darkness. And the, one of the parables that's uh, one of the most memorable ones for me is one that shows up in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the parable of the sower, about the sower who goes out and is sowing seed, and some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Matthew writes that other seeds fell on the rocky ground, and they didn't have much soil, and they sprang up quickly. But since they had no depth of soil, when the sun arose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. And other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. And, and other seeds fell, though, on good soil and brought forth grain, and uh, some of it a hundredfold and sixty and thirty times. And let anyone who has ears listen. 
the gospel is filled with stories of noting that God is constantly trying to bring life and light and opportunity and often gets rejected by us and rejected by the world. And so some falls on roads and, and it doesn't, doesn't have any chance. It just gets pecked up and it's gone immediately. Some people hear light and, and life and and it grows for a minute, but it's so shallow that it doesn't get the depth it needs, and it withers when the sun comes. And for some, they're growing up in something, but the thorns and the challenges of the world choke it out, and eventually it falls short. But for some, the good news of life falls on good soil, and the growth doesn't just happen, it exponentially happens, where it's unexplainable when there's actually good soil that life emerges in, in bountiful measure. And so, as we enter into this 2021, which I'm going to keep saying to remind myself, New Year, are we cultivating our lives into a good soil that responds faithfully to God's seed, that welcomes the surprising work of God in our lives? Because uh, if we just remind ourselves of the last year, there's plenty of surprises. All that we can do is to work on ourselves to be cultivating a type of soil that when we have challenges, when we have struggles, that we are a good soil that's receptive to where God might be bringing life in the midst of that. And it's not just about a single day of yes, it's not just New Year's Eve having the New Year's resolutions, but it's about saying yes and being faithful to that each day on that random Tuesday, on that random Thursday, that you continue on in this process of saying yes to God's work in the world, but also the work in us individually. And so in this new year season, what is it to read John 1, 5 and say, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it? The world can be a dark place, but can we have hope and faith that ultimately the light is not overcome by darkness. What does it mean for the world for that to be globally true? No matter how much darkness is there, the light is not overcome. What is it to have the faith that that's true in your life? That no matter how much darkness is there, that the light will not be overcome by it. And so John gives us, in the midst of some bleak language of the world rejecting and not accepting the light, he does have some faith and hope that he offers when he says, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. What is it to put our hope that the light is not overcome by darkness and to accept uh, that light and to be a part of uh, God's transformative, powerful work of transforming us into children. Uh, and a lot of kind of rival religious groups of that age, uh, you might have been seen as just only as a slave of the gods or as an enemy of the gods, but what is it to also become a child of God? And when we think about the season of all these gifts that you want to give to people in your life or uh, what is it to be a parent and want to give gifts to your children? What is it to latch on to God and to accept God's love and embrace? And no matter how uh, positive or challenging your family situation is, know that God is good and is a good father. And so what is it to say yes to that invitation? And I mentioned earlier about how we often kind of want to make that just only that one moment kind of thing of like, well, I've said yes before, but are we cultivating the soil that no matter what surprises come our way, we continue to say yes, and we continue to embrace uh, the fullness of the life that God is inviting us into. And so I was thinking about if you had gotten a, a gift for Christmas, or it could be any occasion, and let's pretend it's not a pandemic, because if we're going to pretend, let's pretend it's positive and, and, and life is healthy and good. And someone has gifted you tickets to your favorite destination. For simplicity, I'm just going to pick Hawaii here that we can all imagine on a snowy day that we're going to a tropical island. Someone has given you tickets, 
And imagine that you take those tickets and you put them in a shadow box and you put them on a shelf or on your wall and say, wasn't that great? I love that gift. I, I got a trip to Hawaii. It wasn't that wonderful. As if just the tickets and just that invitation was enough as opposed to living the experience, the full experience, the one of making it to an airport, the one of getting checked in, the one of flying, the one of uh, the foods and, and the people that you meet and the fullness of the experience. And our Christian journey is not just so simple as just only that yes or no moment of that first time, but it's the joys and the fullness of life of the full experience of it, of the full opportunity of it. And so Christmas invites us uh, not just to say yes to the light coming into the world, but to be about uh, the fullness of living out that message of hope and life. And so too often we, we just kind of settle for, well, it's nice having the manger scene out front of my house around Christmas, or it's nice having the, the cross on the wall, or it's nice you know, having the fish on the back of my car, but too often we don't embrace the fullness of what it can mean to live out God's calling for your life. And so as you are, maybe you're procrastinated about your New Year's resolutions, uh, you don't need a special day to make those resolutions for your life, but choose this year to cultivate your life to being good soil that is receptive and willing to accept God's life in your world and the world around you. And so may we choose to be good soil that, that spends more time in prayer. It's one of the best ways I know to, to become more receptive to what God might be doing in your life. May we be uh, more in, into reading our scriptures. May we be more into serving others who are in need. May we be more into both teaching and learning. May we be more in giving and generosity. May we be more in just celebrating the fullness of life that God offers us, even in the midst of the darkness, celebrating that the light will not be overcome by it. And so today, celebrate that life that emerges in Christmas by accepting it and living it this year and not just in a single day. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we thank you for your life and your light For those of us who have experienced that, we can think back on the moments in our life where things looked bleak and you gave hope, where we trusted and uh, realized once again that you were faithful. Lord, for those who have never experienced or seen that light in the midst of darkness in their life, we ask that you might open eyes and ears and hearts to the fullness of life that you invite us into. And may we be people that radiate that light beyond ourselves, that those around us uh, experience that exponential growth of life that's infectious for life and not for death. Lord, we, we ask that you might cultivate our lives and, and bring forth in us the fruits of the Spirit and that we might be more like you in this year. Jesus, it's in your name that we pray. Amen.